He took a slow breath, his voice deep and dangerous. I can't get you and your sister out yet, so I'm going in. I'm not leaving Sedona without you. No. My pulse raced at breakneck speed. They'll kill you. Only if they think I'm still with the pack in Reno. At the moment, the only thing I cared about was keeping him safe. I'd survived in this pack so far, I could hang on a little longer. It's too risky. You're not thinking straight. He caressed the edge of my jaw, the simple touch sending tingles through my entire body. They will never hurt you again. Luke, this is nuts. Just the thought of them killing him was making me physically ill. Please. He kissed my forehead and whispered, You're my mate, Raven. When he moved back, intensity darkened his eyes. And if any of them ever try to touch you again, they'll have to kill me first. That was exactly what I was afraid of. Aaron stood and started to storm out of the office, but then turned. Nobody gets to kill him but me. Their mother walked in right then, a smile on her beautiful face. Who are we killing now? Mom was used to the three sisters always plotting someone's demise. Oh, but she didn't know how bad this was. This was really bad. This actually felt murder-worthy. Owen dumped me, Mom. And he's already left for Aruba without me. Their mother just stared at her, dumbfounded for a few minutes. What? He did what? She took her mother's hand and led her to the desk, showing her the email Owen had sent. She read it, then read it again, and lifted her head to stare in confusion at Aaron. This makes no sense, Aaron. He loves you. Aaron snorted. Apparently not. He said he tried to talk to me, but I wouldn't listen. I don't even know what he's talking about. Because he most certainly never talked to me about ending our engagement. He couldn't even face me, the coward. Aaron didn't understand it. As her mother and sisters talked amongst themselves, she turned to face the window, looking out over the vineyards, rows and rows of grapes growing, promising a prosperous future. Opening shipping crates was not a ladylike activity but Poppy Cavendish had precious little faith in the advantages of being mistaken for a lady. She thrust her hammer claw around the final nail and bore down with all the considerable force her wiry body could muster. She had waited months for this particular box, stamped with its labels from Mr. Alva Carpenter across the Atlantic. She had no intention of waiting any longer. The nail gave way with a satisfying pop. The smell of dried leaves and sphagnum moss wafted out around her. She closed her eyes and breathed it in. It smelled like musk and earth and opportunity. Inside the box, the trays of roots and bulbs had been packed gingerly, each item tagged with numbers corresponding to a sheet of sketches of the mature plants they would become. She willed her hands to unwrap them steadily careful not to damage the dry, fragile cuttings that had traveled so long and so far. She held her breath as she reached the bottom of the crate. Her hands found what they were seeking. Magnolia Virginiana. At last. A sound fills the air between us. A gasp followed by a giggle. I recoil from Eli like he's made of acid and spin to face the door we never closed. Thankfully. It's just Sadie and Winnie. They've got their arms looped together, and Sadie grins wickedly. This must be the goalie. If he is so off limits, then why are you so on top of him? I run my hands through my hair and glare at both of them before turning to Eli. He's wiping a hand across his mouth and looking frantic. He steps around me, careful not to touch any part of me, and slips by my sisters. Sadie and Winnie, I presume? Hi. I have to go. He blurts it all out in a tight but friendly tone at warp speed, and then he's down the stairs before I can blink. Winnie frowns. He's not one for pleasantries. He's a casco, Sadie explains. It's like in their genetic code to be aloof and abrupt. You know he's Levi's brother? I hiss in shock. 
Sadie nods calmly and steps into the bathroom to check out her reflection. The minute you mentioned a goalie, I did my research. You cyber-stalked him, I reply flatly. Sadie just shrugs. Winnie's eyes are so wide, I'm scared they might fall out of her head. Oh, my God. How did we not know Levi had such a fine piece of ass for a brother? Well, I mean, Dixie knew, but... I yank Winnie into the bathroom and close the door, shutting out the possibility of anyone overhearing us. I hope.